So somewhat related to the uh, redundancy protocols uh, is another way of increasing your uh, redundancy and increasing your scalability of your network. And this feature is link aggregation. Uh, and so what we were talking about were uh, the hierarchical nature of network design and how you could have multiple links interconnecting different trees like so and then relying on spanning tree to to deal with that you can also have redundant devices like we were talking about with links in between those and then those would fail over appropriately additionally there's an option for link aggregation and what link aggregation does is it's not just for scalability of your switches you can also do this to a server for example and what this will let you do is use multiple interfaces on a switch uh, or if you're going to a server multiple interfaces on the server to the switch uh, and use them and bundle them as one so it gives you a greater bandwidth uh, available for that connection and built into it is also failover capabilities so if uh, one link of the that bundle goes down the others are still available so it would look something like this we'd have two ports on our network card that would connect into our server and then we have two ports on our switches that would then be used uh, to connect it same thing between switches you could have two links going between your switches that way you have double the amount of bandwidth theoretically uh, and you have that failover capability uh, and the way link aggregation works by default is it will do there's different methods but um, the basic method is uh, round robin so it would send some traffic one way send some traffic the other and, and vice versa so this option is called ether channel for Cisco proprietary use. So if you have all Cisco devices, uh, you would most likely use Ether channel. If you're using other vendors or you're connecting to other vendors or you just really like to use the standards instead, uh, there is the Link Aggregation Control Protocol, LACP. And uh, that is an IEEE standard. So it's uh, 80, whoops. It is 802.1ax. Uh, the previous version, which uh, you're probably more familiar with if you've looked into this before, is 802.1ad. So it was relatively recently upgraded to ax, but uh, you can still refer to it to ad. So that is uh, the two options we have. And uh, what it does is it creates a group. Uh, both of these options create a link aggregation group of these ports that we decide to add and you can add uh, more than two you can go up to eight in a group it ends up creating a link aggregation group a lag on each side and then that lag becomes essentially an interface in the switch so the physical ports are no longer individually managed they now are bounded together into one um, hybrid port that then includes all those different individual ports so you'd go into that uh, created interface for the group and configure it there and in uh, Cisco devices that's called a port channel which we'll see Within uh, the Ether channel specifications, uh, I mentioned there's a max of eight ports to a group. So with uh, fast Ethernet, that would be a max of 800 megabits per second, theoretically, or eight gigabits per second. Uh, up to six Ether channel groups may be defined. So that's one limitation that you may run into is uh, if you have some sort of central switch that you're trying to do a ton of ether channel on uh, you're going to be limited by that a bit so you'll have to factor that into your design is you have a max of six groups the 
uh, switch ports negotiate their ether channel group uh, by sending packets every 30 seconds with the details of their configuration and the ports must be configured with the same speed and duplex and VLAN settings so you can't mix and match there you could also do this on a trunk it doesn't have to be an access especially when you're talking about inter switch connections you have to make sure the trunk setting to the same and um, you know you want to make sure the allowed VLANs are the same and such uh, and then just keep the speed and duplex the same and, and that'll work just fine uh, so LAC, that was all specifications on Ether channel. LACP is a similar idea. Uh, it has a couple different uh, options uh, that are standardized. Otherwise, it's it's basically the same idea. Uh, there's a an active and a passive option, which also is uh, available on Ether channel. So both of these have this active slash passive setup. And what you can do is configure port for active mode or passive mode. Uh, so active mode will send LACP packets to try to bring up a tunnel. Uh, well, bring up a group, I should say. Uh, whereas uh, auto or passive mode will just accept a connection. This is kind of like uh, desirable and uh, auto. Remember we were talking about dynamic desirable for DTP and dynamic auto. Same idea here. So this is like dynamic desirable and dynamic auto. Uh, within ether channel the same thing is used but just slightly different phrase it's guess what desirable and auto you can also force them uh, to an on uh, an on mode so that they're always uh, up no matter what and uh, they don't necessarily negotiate and what we'll do is uh, show this actually I'll go into packet tracer and we'll just put two switches down and we'll make a an ether channel group between them and we'll take a look at those uh, settings and how that's set up you'll see how relatively easy uh, it is to do so so we'll go into packet tracer here and we'll drop two switches and then I'm going to connect between them and I'll just make the ports the same we're going to use a crossover just because we're going to make it nice and together there we go and you'll see spanning tree is already trying to do its thing uh, but what we're going to do is just ignore that and go into our switches and we're going to set up this channel so we're going to go into global config and I'm going to go into those two interfaces so interface range FA01 to 2 so we can do that range command and we're going to make a channel group so we're going to do channel group we're going to say what number group do we want 1 to 6 remember channel group 1 and then mode and then what mode do we want so is it ether channel only is it uh, LACP uh, only so if we do uh, mode or one mode active, that would lean towards LACP. If we do on, it will use only use Ether channel. Uh, it's kind of what you wish to use. I could say uh, active, for example. And we'll wait for that to uh, do some stuff. And we'll go over to switch zero. And do the same thing. Now at this point it's going to reset those ports and go through some negotiations. We just have to give it a second for that to come up. Almost there. All right, and now it's up. And all right, well, it's got to wait a couple more seconds for it to come up. <laughs> there.
There we go. All right, now it's up. Just got to give it uh, give it a second. So what we can do is take a look at this. Uh, if we go into our running config, we'll see that we have on our two interfaces channel group one mode active, so it's trying to use LACP. The number of the group is one, and then if we go down, we'll see we have a port channel interface. So that port channel interface is that new virtual interface that's created to accommodate these uh, to accommodate these ports. So what we can do is go into show IP in brief, for example, and you'll see that we have fast ether one and two are up, and then we have port channel one is up, and we can even do show ether channel, and it'll give us some information about that. So you can see we have group one, uh, the ports. Uh, the port channel that's set up, how many ports are in there, the maximum, remember we said uh, what that was, and uh, the protocol that we're using. So we're using LACP instead of uh, Ether channel in this example. If we had changed that keyword at the end, active to on, for example, it would have forced Ether channel. And that's really all there is to configuring Ether channel.